Hi guys, welcome back aboard Athena. Fair warning, this video is going to be slightly different because this video is coming to you from the past. Oh, that might have been overly dramatic. All that means is you guys won't see this video until two weeks from today. Normally I like to stick as close as possible to real time and most of my videos are published within four to five hours of me finish shooting them. But this video is different because right now, meaning by the time you're watching this, I won't be here aboard Athena. I'll be in New York City. I'll be in New York City for about a week and while I'm there, I won't have time to shoot any video. So I figured what I could do was shoot a little bit of video today and then a little bit of video next Sunday and then perhaps I could cobble that together to form a video I could publish while I'm in New York City. Of course, by doing it this way, I am bound to run into some continuity issues, just like with time travel. I plan on getting by those continuity issues by making this video not as much about DIY, but more about the upcoming projects this summer and maybe the entire cost of the projects so far. If you're wondering why the heck I've gone down the ladder, well, it's because the hull is the first item on my list of projects I hope to get done this summer. I've already talked a fair bit about the hull in some of my previous videos, but just to sum it up very briefly, I sanded down the hull to bare fiberglass last summer because there was some osmosis and I'm now waiting for the hull to dry out. And once it's done drying out, which will hopefully happen this summer, well, I can then go ahead and fare the hull, put on a few extra layers of fiberglass, some primer and then some copper coat. Needless to say, that is going to be a pretty big project, but so is the second project on my list of projects for this summer. But to show you that, I'll have to head up the ladder again. I'm sure a lot of you have guessed what project I'm referring to already. If you haven't, I'm of course referring to the old teak deck because this stuff, it's not really in the best shape. There are multiple issues with the old teak deck, but I knew that going in, so it's okay. Now for one, the old teak deck is not adhered to the sandwich construction anymore, so that's kind of an issue. And also, there's just not a lot of wood left in this. It, it feels like cardboard. It's incredibly light. Another issue with the deck is the fact that it's leaking like a sieve, and that's through all of the hundreds of holes where screws are going through the teak and penetrating into the sandwich construction. Now, the sandwich construction is actually soaking wet. It's not that big of a deal because it's a foam construction and not a wooden construction, but it's still not great, so it's something I need to correct. I mentioned that the teak deck isn't adhered to the hull, and that is both a blessing and a curse. In my case, it's actually a good thing because it means I will be able to remove the teak deck very easily. I think I might even be able to remove all of the teak deck and prep the surface in a single weekend, but uh, I've been known to be a little optimistic, so we'll see. Now, this is kind of an odd thing about this boat. This is the foam core in the sandwich construction of the deck, and about most boats, normally you'd see this hump here on the bottom side of the deck but on this boat it's on top and that means there's, there's this kind of indentation out here for water to gather up in and uh, I'll have to come up with a solution to do something about this. It's starting to rain and although my camera is weather sealed I don't want to risk it because it would kind of suck to have to go back to my old camera but I can easily continue the story down below so come on down below. Of course, by coming down below, we are very much entering into the danger zone when talking about continuity issues. For instance, the stove is sitting right here, and I'm planning on doing the final installation of this next weekend. So that'll be the video you guys saw last weekend. Yeah, please just bear in mind that this video is kind of out of sequence. Let's get back to the teak deck. When I said the sandwich construction of the deck was soaking wet, that might have been a slight exaggeration. I have seen water drip from holes drilled from inside of the boat up into the sandwich construction on a couple of occasions. So I know it's wet and it is something I'll need to fix. Now, the deck itself is nice and stiff as opposed to spongy, so I don't foresee any kind of issues with the sandwich construction itself. But if there are a few areas where I need to replace some of the core material, that's not a big deal. 
sadly, last I checked, I wasn't made of money, so I won't be putting on a new teak deck. They're just crazy expensive. I love the look, but they're way too expensive. So what I'll do instead is I'll remove all of the old teak deck, remove all of the screws, fill up the screw holes with thickened epoxy, fair the surface, maybe put on an extra layer of fiberglass, and then some kind of coating. I haven't decided which yet. I know, for instance, all grip is popular, but I haven't decided yet. Those are two pretty big projects, and if I'm to have a chance at completing both of them this summer, it'll mean putting things here inside the boat on pause. And that's, of course, provided I can get started on those two projects. For instance, I'll have to have the hull dry out first, and uh, yeah, we'll see if that happens. But if I can get started on those two projects, and if I put things on pause here inside the boat, it's kind of okay because the aft cabin is almost ready for Yurkul and I to sleep in there, and now I can also cook here aboard the boat. So theoretically, if I'm able to splash Athena this fall, we'll move aboard, I can sell Obelix, and uh, I'll just continue the refit while we're living aboard. I know a lot of you guys have been looking forward to me rewiring the AC and the DC here aboard the boat. And don't worry, my plans for the immediate future hasn't changed. I'm still going to do that. I'll start out by rewiring the AC and then the DC. Or that's to say, I think the DC is going to be more of a moving target because I think that's going to continue to evolve. So I can't really finish that. But I hope to have the AC locked down before I move aboard the boat. And that is, of course, because of the super angry pixies that are inside the wiring when talking about AC stuff. Now, by the way, this might be another continuity issue. This is also on my to-do list for next weekend. Those are the two major items on my to-do list for this summer. So that's to fix the hull and to fix the deck. Now, if for some reason the hull doesn't dry out, I think I'll still fix the deck because that would be nice to get sorted. And then, well, then I'll just continue working on the interior refit. I better stop yammering on and get busy doing some DIY. Today I hope to fill in this hole here and get started painting this surface because I'm going to put an AC outlet here and I will have to have this sorted before I start rewiring the AC. But I'm not gonna include that in this video because well I think I want to keep this video short and to the point and also I do work a lot faster when I'm not filming at the same time. So I'll see you guys in about a week for the second half of this video. And just like that, it's about a week later. Little did I know last weekend would turn into a complete cluster hump of a weekend. I didn't get to complete any of the goals I'd set myself for that weekend, but I did get to cross off a bunch of other stuff for my to-do list, so that's good. And it also means the continuity issue I was so worried about is not that big of a deal. For the second half, and I've just noticed I am wearing the exact same clothing I was last weekend. Well, with the exception of my hat. That was a different hat. It's a good thing I don't care about clothing. Otherwise, this would probably have been embarrassing, I guess. Going back to the continuity issue, the only thing you might be able to notice that's different here aboard the boat is this area down here. I've got four coats of paint on there now, so before I leave the boat today, I'm going to apply the fifth and hopefully final coat. And that means this area will be done before I head to New York City tomorrow. Oh yeah, I better go ahead and mention the meetup just one last time. If you want to meet up in person and tell me what a horrible job I'm doing here aboard Athena, feel free to swing by the meetup. It's in Brooklyn. It's at the Fulton Ale House. It's on Sunday, the 2nd of April. That's the same day as I published this video. And it's at 3 p.m. local time. There was something I forgot to mention last weekend when I told you about my upcoming projects for this summer. On the bottom of that list is getting the port aft cabin as close as possible to being done. And that means insulating the side of the hull, covering that up with some wooden slats to hide the insulation, and then covering this bit up here up with some six millimeter plywood. I haven't decided if I'm gonna insulate up here yet, but uh, I'll figure that out. I know hoping to take care of both the hull, the deck, and now also the port aft cabin is very ambitious just for one summer, but the port aft cabin is at the very bottom of that list. It would be nice to have it sorted because in all likelihood, this is where Yurkul and I are going to be living while I fix up the rest of the boat. And it would be nice not to live around exposed fiberglass. But uh, yeah, like I said, 
at the very bottom of the list. Let's get back to the topic of the second half of this video, which is money, 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 aka what has this project cost Wilma and I so far? It is with a slight unease I venture into this topic. It is a frequently requested topic, but I think it might be a little bit of a dangerous topic also. I'm sure not all of you guys agree that what I'm doing here about Athena is a good idea or the right thing to do or whatever, but please bear in mind that I am doing exactly what I want to be doing right now. For me, fixing up an old boat is a part of the dream. It goes fixing up an old boat, save up a bit of money, become a full-time cruiser. That is my dream. All the prices I'll mention are gonna be in US dollars. Of course, we don't use the US dollar over here in Denmark, but the vast majority of the views I get are from the US, so it makes sense to go with the dollar. Let's start with the most expensive item on the list, and that is this delicious hunk of fiberglass. For Athena, I paid the rough equivalent of 42,000 US dollars. Let's continue down the list and take a look at some of the more expensive items I've added to Athena over the last year. First up are the new port lights. I've already installed six new port lights and I have additional three ready to install as soon as the outside temperature goes up just a little bit. For these nine port lights, I paid roughly $2,000. To heat the boat, I'll use a reflex stove, and that stove is hiding behind all of this junk here. For the stove and all the stainless I need for the installation, the day tank, and a diesel pump, I paid the rough equivalent of 2,100 US dollars. Just to give you a quick glimpse, this is the reflex stove, and it's ready to be installed as soon as I've removed the old teak deck. I've also built a new fridge, which is hiding behind here. For that, I paid roughly $580, and that includes all of the installation I used and the compressor and evaporator. In one of my later videos, I've shown you a bunch of electronics. That includes the chart plotter, the iCommunicate, the NMEA to USB gateway, a tank level center, and some other doodads. And if we add all of that up, that comes out to $1,912. The next big ticket item on my list is the AC, the DC, and the source select panels from Blue Sea. To be frank, those were ridiculously expensive. I paid the equivalent of $1,539. I know they are a little bit more reasonably priced in the US, but that was the lowest price I could find over here. As you might have noticed, I've also used a bit of paint and some varnish. I've used about 10 liters of this stuff, or 2.6 gallons, and this is multi-coat from Hempel. This cost me $245, and I've used about 5 liters, or 1.3 gallons, of this varnish, and about half a gallon of the satin varnish. That's a total of 210. And add to that the 365 I've spent on brushes, rollers, masking tape, and stuff like that, we get a total of 820. But I've also used some light primer from Hempel, and I have about eight cans of that stuff still sitting in my storage unit. That raises the total to $1,105. As far as the plywood I've used, that cost $257. Add to that the teak molding I have ready to mount in various locations around the boat, and we're at $401. And let's not forget the beautiful new stove. That was $760. We are nearing the bottom of my list. The second to last item is all the stuff from Victron Energy. So that's the charger, the isolation transformer, and the battery monitor. I have not included the inverter because I haven't purchased that yet. For the three items I have purchased, that comes out to $1,606. Last and also least, there is $454 spent on miscellaneous stuff. So that's screws, sandpaper, a new shop bag, stuff like that. And that brings us to a grand total of $54,809 US dollars spent so far. By the time I'm done fixing up Athena, she'll be like a brand new boat, and the price tag should still be considerably less than a brand new boat.
and also I'll know every single square inch of her inside and out and that is very important to me because that means I can easily fix any kind of issues even if I'm stuck out in the middle of nowhere. I am almost certain someone is gonna comment down below saying LOL you paid way too much for that heap of a junk boat. <laughs> but before you do, please consider that Athena has an almost brand new engine with only 1100 hours on it, plenty of sails in okay to mint condition, a wind vane, an autopilot, radar, a bunch of other stuff that'll come in very handy when I untie the lines. I am very satisfied with what I've paid for Athena. A good question right about now would be, but Mass, how much money will you have spent by the time you're completely done? And to be honest, I don't know. What I do know is I've budgeted with $4,300 for fixing the osmosis issue and then $1,200 for fixing the deck after I've removed the old teak. But there are a few more items on my to-do list before Athena and I are ready to set out and cruise the world. For one, she'll need new standing rigging, a few more new port lights, and I'll uh, redo the forward cabin. And that's probably gonna include a washing machine and a freezer. So the short answer is, I don't know how much I'll have spent by the time I'm completely done. I know $54,809 is a lot of money, but considering Athena will end up being my home for years to come, I don't think it's that bad. And sure, if I had purchased a $54,000 boat to begin with, I could have gotten a boat that was in better condition. But remember, I love doing these DIY projects. It's not something I have to do, it's something I love and want to do. And besides, if it wasn't for all the glorious sanding I do here aboard Athena, what would I make videos about? Go sailing, you say? <laughs> what a ridiculous suggestion. Remember, I'm single, I don't have a girlfriend I can pimp out as clickbait, and clearly looking at what's on YouTube nowadays, you cannot make a YouTube video without at least one person wearing a bikini, and uh, yeah, that person is just not gonna be me. I still have a bunch of stuff to take care of before I'm ready to get on the plane tomorrow, so I better end this video here. Fair warning, I might not be able to publish a video next Sunday. I'll do everything I possibly can to make that happen, but I'm just not sure. So if there's no new video next Sunday, it's not because I've gotten lost in New York City and can't find my way home. Okay guys, that is gonna be it for this video. See you!